William Floyd Collins was born July 20, 1887, in Auburn, Kentucky, east of Mammoth Cave. He would primarily use his middle name through life. His father was Lee Collins, and his mother was Martha Burnett. He would begin entering caves by himself at the age of six, in search of Native American artifacts, which he would sell to tourists at the Mammoth Cave Hotel. In 1912, a geologist named Edmund Turner hired Floyd to show him the caves around the area. Consequently, Turner and Floyd would assist in the discovery of Dosey Dome Cave and the Great Onyx Cave. Two years later, in September of 1917, Floyd discovered cool air coming from a hole in the ground. Being an expert in finding and exploring caves, he knew what this could mean. Upon widening the hole, he was able to see down into a cavity that was part of a larger cave system. It would take him three and a half months, but in December, after further excavation, Floyd would finally discover the sinkhole entrance to what he would later name Great Crystal Cave. Because the cave was on his father's land, he made a deal with Floyd and deeded him a half interest in the cave, which they immediately decided to commercialize. After tremendous preparation by the entire family to clean and clear debris from the entrance, the transformed cave was opened to the public in April of 1918. But due to its remote location, the cave would attract a low number of tourists. Floyd hoped to find another cave he could open to the public, closer to the main roads, or another entrance to Mammoth Cave. He made an agreement with three farmers who owned land closer to the main highway. If he found a cave, they would form a business partnership and share in the responsibilities of operating this attraction. Working alone and within three weeks, he had found, explored, and expanded a hole that would later be called Sand Cave by the news media. On January 30th, 1925, after several hours of work and squeezing through several narrow passageways, he claimed he had discovered a large grotto chamber, though this was never verified. With his lamp dying, he wanted to leave before losing all light. He attempted to move quickly through the cave, but became trapped in one of the small passages on his way out. While trying to free himself, he accidentally knocked over his lamp, breaking it. With no light, he would continue to try and free himself. As he struggled, a 26-pound rock fell from the cave ceiling, pinning his left leg. He was even more so trapped, in a dark, cold cave, 55 feet below the surface, and 150 feet from the cave entrance. After spending all night, wet, cold, and in agony, he was found the next day by a friend, and an electric light was sent down to provide him with some warmth. Rescuers were able to bring water and food to Collins while rescue efforts were organized. He would survive for more than a week, but tragically, on February 4th, the cave entrance collapsed in two places. Rescue leader Henry Carmichael determined the cave impassable and too dangerous. With no other options, they began to dig a shaft in an attempt to reach the chamber behind Floyd. It would take them 12 days to dig the 55-foot shaft and subsequent lateral tunnel that intersected with the cave just above Floyd. On Monday, February 16th, the shaft was completed, and miner Ed Brenner was finally able to get to Floyd. Floyd's friend, Johnny Geralds, was allowed to go into the lateral tunnel and positively identify the body. Dr. William Hazlitt and Captain Francis, a National Guard medical officer, were then unsuccessful in an attempt to reach the body, but Ed, who was already down there, was able to follow their examination instructions for the official death declaration to be made. It was estimated Floyd had passed away three to five days before they reached him, with February 13th the most likely date. Thirst, hunger, and hypothermia are believed to be the cause. Because they could not free his leg, his body was left in place. The shaft was filled and funeral services were held on the surface. Floyd's brother, Homer, was not pleased with Sand Cave being his brother's grave. And two months later, he and some friends reopened the shaft. They dug a new tunnel to the opposite side of the cave passage and were able to recover his remains on April 23rd. 
Following a two-day visitation at the funeral home on April 26, his body was transported to the family farm and was buried on the hillside over Crystal Cave, which his father would later rename Floyd Collins Crystal Cave. This would have been a bittersweet ending to a tragic event, but in 1927, Lee sold the homestead and cave to Dr. Harry Thomas, a dentist and owner of Mammoth Onyx Cave and Hidden River Cave. The new owner had Floyd's body dug up and placed in a glass-topped coffin to display inside the cave. In March of 1929, on the night of the 18th or 19th, the body was stolen. It would be found sometime later in a nearby field, but the injured left leg was missing. After this desecration, the remains were kept in a secluded portion of the cave in a chained casket. In 1961, Crystal Cave was purchased by Mammoth Cave National Park and closed to the public. The family, who had objected to Floyd's body being displayed, and, at their request, the National Park Service reinterned him for the last time at Mammoth Cave Baptist Church Cemetery, Mammoth Cave, Kentucky, in 1989.